Larie here, welcome or welcome back. You will find these next five tips very helpful on your next flight when traveling with your children. The first thing is comfort. So for travel, I tend to dress my children in loosely fitting clothing for their flight and then usually like either a sweater or pullover jacket or sweater that they can pop off if they get a little too warm or they can pop back on if they get a little bit too cold. I also encourage them to kick their shoes off and get comfortable. So if you need to pack flip-flops or shoes that they can just quickly slip on should they need to run to the restroom, you could do that as well. The next thing is electronics. Headphones iPads with downloaded movies and games, entertainment, and then of course, chargers. So of course, if you have movies downloaded on the iPad, that's gonna be very helpful should there be a problem with the Wi-Fi on the airplane or anything like that, you'll be prepared. We generally have movies downloaded to their iPads at the very least. There's also option, of course, for them to draw and just do other miscellaneous things, crayons or some type of activity book. So should they get bored of the iPad, they can easily draw or color or write. Lately, they've been very much into tic-tac-toe and hangman, so we play that. They call it man on the pole. Back in my day, we just call it hangman. One of the most important things you could do is pack snacks snacks just something from the snack on even if they've had dinner for some reason they get on the plane should there be any reason why you can't get a hold of snacks from the flight attendants maybe there's turbulence and they can't bring the flight service out and usually vacation can be hectic getting out the door so always pack snacks and just have them on hand in case you can't get snacks right away but the most important portion of packing snacks is the gum or lollipops for takeoff and landing because of the pressure in their ears they need to be chewing or like have that swallowing motion to clear their ears. My husband, for example, whenever his ears, whenever his ears get clogged during the takeoff and landing, it gives him a headache and it hurts a lot for him because sometimes his nose is stuffed up. And I didn't know what he was going through until it happened to me when one time I flew and I was getting over a cold and my nose was plugged. But the pressure and the headache that you get is like something you never want to experience. Now I know what my husband goes through, so. Pack gum, it's an essential, absolute essential that you're gonna wish you had if you didn't have it on the plane. And of course, if you have a little baby that's breastfeeding, that's a really easy one, which is what I did with my little ones. I put them on to nurse for takeoff and for landing, which was incredibly helpful. And of course, these tips are really helpful for long haul or short flights. For example, with our upcoming trip, it's gonna be almost three hours away. But all of these things still apply. And even while traveling abroad, because I've traveled abroad with my children, numerous times and another thing you can do on the plane is try and get them up to move around as much as possible walking up and down the aisles not only will it keep their circulation flowing it will give them something else to look at and be distracted by and entertained by as opposed to sitting in the seat sometimes i've seen where a baby is just kind of acting up and they just want to get up and move around and i find that's really helpful so get up and move around as much as possible it's really great for your circulation of course as well but it definitely keeps the kids from getting bored and cranky as long as it's safe to do so I get them up and walking around. This is for anyone who might be flying abroad. Like I said, I've taken a number of trips with my kids abroad. So one of the things I have found to be very helpful is to schedule the trip so that the children can have dinner in flight, relax, and then it's closer to bedtime. After dinner, they watch a few movies and then they're winding down for bedtime so they can just sleep right through the flight. My children are really good sleepers now that they, they are older and they became good sleepers probably around closer to the age of like 18 to 15 months. They, once they go to sleep, that would be it. My kids used to sleep for 12 hours. <laughs> now they sleep more for like 10 or 11 and they're older now and they're six and eight. But I had a very strict sleep routine. So I find with flying abroad, just try to schedule it so that they have a little bit of time to play on the flight, but then they kind of ease into their bedtime. You take their pillow, their blanket, which I should have added to this list. It's not essential, but it's helpful if you have a small pillow or something you can roll up for them to curl up under. And of course, if you're taking an international flight, they usually provide sanitized pillows and blankets. I don't know what the restrictions are now, but back when we flew abroad, new pillows and blankets were provided. So that's really great. It's really great to schedule those international flights late at night so the kids can be knocked out. I hope this video has provided you with some helpful info and some great tips for your next flight with your babies. 
please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe. If you like travel videos, you definitely want to subscribe because I am often on the go with my little ones and with my husband as a family and I also do solo trips. So stick around for some of those adventures that might inspire your next vacation. I will see you again very soon. Bye.